Thanks for joining us. So, of course, we know at this point that Israel is saying this is a bad deal, even going as far as saying it's a, an historic mistake. But a lot of other people saying this is a great deal. What's your view? Yeah, it's strange that Mr. Netanyahu is saying this because this is exactly what he asked for one year ago. You remember when he went to the UN General Assembly and drew a picture, a cartoon picture of a bomb and then drew a red line and said Iran was enriching uranium and if they crossed that line they would have enough for a bomb? Well, this deal drains that bomb. It gets rid of all the uranium that Mr. Netanyahu was worried about. You, you, under this deal, Iran is not going to make any more of the so-called 20% enriched uranium. And the stockpile that it has, it will turn into a form that can't be used for a bomb. But it's even better than that. They've agreed that from now on, even when they're making uranium for fuel, they will quickly turn that into an oxide form that can't be used for a bomb. This effectively stops Iran from making uranium for, for a bomb and starts to get rid of the stockpiles that they've accumulated. It's an amazing deal. And the more you read it, the more you realize how much Iran is giving up. It freezes the program in its tracks and starts to roll back key parts of it. So it sounds like you're feeling it's, it's very tough, this deal. It, but what is to stop What's to stop Iran from continuing operations, perhaps at an undisclosed location? And how can this all be policed properly? Well, first, there's only a certain number of facilities where they make uh, centrifuges to enrich uranium. And under this deal, they're going to stop making new centrifuges. They're going to stop installing centrifuges that they've made. They're not going to turn on thousands of centrifuges that they've installed, but, but not operating. Without this deal, Iran could have... T uh, uh, tens of thousands of centrifuges running over the next couple of years, making enough uranium for, for dozens of bombs. This deal prevents that. And it increases the inspections. They're now going to have daily inspections. So if, you, if Iran does try to ch cheat on this deal, you will know it almost immediately. There is still the problem of secret facilities, and the inspections don't go far enough to detect those. That's what's going to be worked out in the final agreement. Remember, this is just phase one. There's at least six months of tough, tough negotiations on, uh, to go. At the end of that, you would have a comprehensive inspection regime that could assure us that Iran was not using any of its program to make a bomb and that there were no secret facilities. What about the point that uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu makes, that Iran is just making, making cosmetic changes here? What's your view of that? Uh, I don't think that's uh, at all true, and there's no evidence to support that. Th these are real changes. This is a dramatic change in their program. There has not been a suspension of the program like this for over 10 years. This is something that the United States has wanted, that Israel itself has wanted. It's finally getting it. I think Mr. Netanyahu has to learn to take yes for an answer. And remember, it's just the beginning of the process. If there are concerns that he legitimately has, he's got six months to talk to his allies, including the United States, to make sure those are worked into a final agreement. But in the meantime, Israel is safer than it was before this deal was reached. The fuse has been lengthened. It will t it would, if Iran were to break out of this agreement, it would now take it twice as long to build a bomb as before they entered into it. Joe Serencioni, many thanks to you for sharing your perspective with us.